Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, you're all very welcome to this uh, IIEA ESB webinar. Uh, we'll just maybe give a couple of uh, seconds for people to, for connections to be made. Okay, um, this is the first webinar of the 2020 ESB IIEA lecture series entitled Rethink Energy. And the webinar is also being live streamed on the IEI's uh, YouTube page. I want to particularly thank the ESB for their sponsorship of this event. And uh, we're really delighted today to be joined by Christian Bouchel, Chairman of the European Distribution System Operators for Smart Grids, who's been generous enough to take time out of his schedule to speak with us. Let me first introduce the head of the Irish DSO, uh, Paddy Hayes, Managing Director of ESB Networks. Paddy. Thanks, Owen, and uh, hello, everyone. And on behalf of ESP Networks, I'm delighted to add my welcome to the, the Rethink Energy Lecture Series for 2020. I'm also particularly delighted that Christian Bouchal has made the time to share his insights with us. As the chair of the European DSO, Association for Smart Grids, Christian provides real leadership to a European association whose member com companies serve 350 million electricity customers in over 24 countries. Christian is acknowledged as one of the foremost thinkers with regard to the role and the future development of distribution systems and I'm honoured to be welcoming him to Rethink Energy. So at, at ESB Networks, um, as many of you know, we believe that a key aspect of our purpose is to connect and accommodate more renewables to the network, working very closely with our colleagues in AirGrid so that the electricity system can be decarbonised. In fact, that's working together very successfully. I saw from IWEA yesterday that the first five months of 2020, Ireland had over 40% uh, of its electricity coming from, uh, from wind. So our purpose not only includes uh, connecting new renewables to the system, but it also includes facilitating wholesale electrification so that the clean electricity can be used as a vector to decarbonize transport heat in the economy. Decarbonization through clean electricity is one of the most tangible and significant pillars of climate action and one that demands a transformation in our distribution system. So we have a wonderful world-class electricity distribution system, but facilitating climate action means that we need to transform it to do things that were never envisaged, things that it was never designed to do. And that transformation is both important and exciting. Just to touch briefly, last week, the Commission for Utility Regulation published for public consultation plans for PR5, that's a critical investment in the distribution system for the period of 2021 to 2025. Underpinning those investments, CRU called out shared objectives for PR5, and those include facilitating and securing a low carbon future, increasing efficiency and protecting customers, of course, but also specifically transforming the role of the distribution system. And detailed in the consultation documents, you can see aspects of the transmission system transformation that we anticipate over the next five years and beyond. Those include continued investment in smart metering and other digital solutions, further development of active system management and the neutral facilitation of system services, enabling microgeneration and other decentralized customer and community developments, and investments in the low voltage network to facilitate the decarbonization of heat and transport. The title of today's talk brought to mind to me a book by Michael Scheel from about 30 years ago. It was called The Quiet Revolution. That book described the electrification of rural Ireland, which is a truly significant time in Ireland's societal and economic development. Well, the re revolution that Christian is going to describe to us today, I think is just as significant. It's incredible to think how far we've come since the days of rural electrification. But the period of change we're entering into now will be just as radical just as important for our customers, our economy, our society, and our future. So I'm really looking forward to Christian's talk and the, dis and the discussion that, in that it engenders. But first of all, I'll hand back now to Professor Lewis. Thanks, Thanks, very, thanks very much, Paddy, thank you. Um, just to give you an idea of the, of the shape of, of things, um, Christian will speak to us about, about uh, 20 minutes or so, and then we'll go to a, a, a Q and A with you, the audience. Um, you'll, ab you'll be able to join that discussion using the Q&A function on Zoom. So you see that at the, at the bottom of your screen. Don't 
please try to use the chat. That won't, that won't work. Um, and I'd encourage you to send your questions in throughout the session as they occur to you. And then we'll come to them once Christian has finished his presentation. Uh, also, feel free to join the discussion on Twitter using the handle at IIEA. Um, I should remind you that both the presentation today and the Q&A are on the record. Now, if I turn to uh, Christian Bouchel, the chairman, as you know, chairman of the European Distribution System Operators for Smart Grids, EDSO, uh, the European Association representing the leading electricity distribution system companies. He's a member of the board of Enedi, uh, France's largest electricity provider, uh, where he's also director of market development, customer relations, and territories and concessions activities. Uh, before this, Christian Bouchel held various top management positions uh, within the EDS group. He's been uh, chief operations officer of Energie Baden-Württemberg in, in Germany um, and CEO of Electricité de Strasbourg. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Christian Bouchel on the smart grid revolution. Christian. Thank you very much. Uh... Professor Levis, a great pleasure for me, and uh, first of all, a warm uh, welcome from, uh, from the east part of France and not far away from uh, Strasbourg, you just mentioned, the heart of the, of the Parliament. I um, would like to express a, a deep thank to the, to the Institute of International and European Affairs, to, uh, to you, Professor Levis, and uh, to my colleague and friend, uh, Paddy Ice, for organizing this uh, webinar in these times. I'm glad and honored to, do, uh, to have this opportunity. It has been just said, distribution system operators are moving fast, really fast. Uh, and my colleagues, uh, uh, my colleague uh, Paddy Eyes, uh, as, as managing director, and is very active in our association, Paddy. Uh, thanks very much. You mentioned uh, some figures, uh, impressive figures. It's a reality. It's already a reality in Ireland. Uh, so wonderful country, yes. Uh, the energy transition is an ongoing reality, but it's the case all over Europe, yes. With some differences uh, in, in countries, but it's a case all over Europe and we are pushing to, to break new ground and implement smart grids. Of course, yes, smart grids are key tools to promote this, this famous 3D strategy, yes, digitalization first. Smart meters, smart meters, big data, more and more processing big data, but also expose uh, big data. IoT, digital devices, and more, are more and more deeply part of the grid. Grid is no more copper and, and uh, I would say, transformers. It's more and more IoT data. Secondly, the decarbonization smart grids allow, Paddy uh, was speaking about this, massive integration of renewable energy sources into the system. And decentralization, I think this is key because it's not only a technical aspect, uh, smart grids are already on the field, on the distribution network for real, for local uh, supporting citizen initiatives. It's not only a question of technology, because decentralization means allowing consumers to become not only, we often say, prosumers, yes, but it's much more than prosumers. It's really uh, the citizen or the customer uh, being really the actor of the energy system in the future. So if you can move to the slide number two. The next one, please. It's possible, thank you very much. Just some word, but it has been uh, said by uh, Professor Ledis, yes. Uh, the ITSO is the European Association, mostly representing the large ESOs all over Europe. Um, ITSO is a key player in, in these times, uh, as not only with power, but with transformation. Our members serve more than uh, 350 million citizens in Europe. Uh, we, what is important to say also that in, we, in, we invest real money, yes? We invest 70 billion euro annually uh, in the networks. And this, uh, this billion of, of, uh, of Europe uh, includes, uh, in recent years, more than 800 million euro for R&D innovation projects. We developed together all the members of ITSO. We have a lot of projects, age 20, 20 projects to innovate. But uh, you may wonder why, uh, as leading DSOs, uh, ESD network is a wonderful uh, 
company in your uh, in 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 your country uh, what why we are so close and uh, working together my answer in a, in a nutshell two aspects first we share all our expertise and our diverse experiences to accelerate the question is accelerating the energy transition and secondly we build we try to build a strong and competitive smart grid industry to make europe and we think we think together as a team that it's possible to be the worldwide leader in this uh, in this industry yes of course it's about industry it's about jobs but it's also a question of european sovereignty if you have the next slide please thank you very much so smart grids are more and more uh, not only a game changer but uh, the, the, the word revolution has been pronounced uh, further on uh, even during this uh, unprecedented and uh, i would say unpredicted crisis i'm speaking about the covid 19 crisis the smart grids demonstrated really their resilience uh, we as dsos uh, and uh, the whole electric system kept the lights on this was not an evidence uh, don't even imagine that europe will connect the expected renewable energy welcome the electric vehicles and reach the, our co2 emission reduction targets without smart grid it would not be possible we are facing an historical uh, challenge the energy transition needs the energy system transformation as a rule and smart grids are the backbone of this transformation the revolution means millions of uh, connected uh, devices and billions of data uh, we have to deal with but not only to deal with this data, we have to transform this data to opportunities. If you can move to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. So smart grids have been a key tool, uh, I mentioned it, to manage the COVID-19 crisis, and unfortunately it's probably not finished. Yes, the SOs have been key actors during this crisis. I say it with some kind of, of, of humility maybe, but we can testify that DSOs have demonstrated the resilience of the network these uh, past months. Uh, lights stayed on in Europe. Countries have been hit differently, yes, uh, uh, by the pandemic and uh, stakeholders or states organized themselves maybe differently. But one thing remains, ensuring essential activities to our customer and protect our employees was key. This has been made possible thanks to smart grids. Uh, we we keep uh, connecting customers to the network and ensure continuity and quality of supply. Digital solutions uh, maintain this link, link allowing DSOs to remotely operate the network. Ten years ago, it would have been much more difficult, much more difficult. Uh, the link ensuring smooth contact between uh, the DSOs, the suppliers, uh, the electricity suppliers, and the customer. Digital was key in this period, and clearly, we use this crisis as companies, as managers, we used also this crisis to accelerate the digitalization of the system. We did it thanks, the, I would say, the wonderful, confident and regular exchanges between uh, uh, us through our association, EDSO. We shared all our experiences these uh, times. Also, our doubts uh, sometimes, uh, and our convictions. Paddy, you remember, probably well as our very first uh, uh, COVID uh, call, uh, it was beginning of, of March, uh, no doubt that ESB Networks has learned a lot hearing the feedback of uh, e-distribution in Italy, our colleagues, or from Iberdrola in Spain, uh, where the COVID-19 was already dramatically active. If you can move to the next slide. Yes, thanks very much. Smart grids are a key tool for, for twin grid and digital transitions and challenges for the European recovery. We think that DSOs are key actors for this green recovery as, as enablers. We say enablers for an acceleration of the energy transition. Thanks to digital solutions and smart grids, thanks to the lesson learned during this crisis, we can bridge much stronger consumer and energy transition connect higher shares of electricity from renewable sources, cooperate more actively with consumers and energy communities, enable in real, a real breakthrough in the speed, the question of speed of developing EV infrastructure uh, across uh, territories. 
as, a, as an association and I'm personally also a manager in the company, but as, as, as an association, which means all leading managers and DSOs in Europe will have proposed to contribute actively to the European Recovery Plan in accordance, of course, with uh, the Paris Agreement and the European objective to, to, to reach the, the, the carbon neutrality um, uh, by uh, 2050. But uh, achieve the United uh, Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals is not a theoretical objective. As an industry, we want and we must do it. Uh, but how? I, I will mention affordable and clean energy for us. It do means not only integrating renewables energy sources into the grid, but also create, and this is new, create value, real economic value for local flexibilities to enhance the grid's efficiency for optimizing energy uses. Second, innovation and infrastructure, IoTs, artificial intelligence, big data, algorithm. We cannot miss this. As an industry, we cannot miss this. And together with our industry partners, not alone with uh, ICT partners, companies, with startups, we pave the way for this future of the digital energy system. And third, sustainability. Our actions are summarized in a, we have recently uh, published a It's So Sustainable Grid Charter, uh, published, was, I think it was just before Christmas in November. Have a look on it, on this uh, sustainable grid charter. Those uh, smart grids are not, an, at least not only a technical issue. Uh, we think, uh, as, as members of ITSO, uh, we have a strong conviction that the customer are at the end, the center of the system. Self-consumption, energy communities, active cooperation with cities, and being aware of the cultural uh, issues are, in our view, as important as the technical aspects of the smart grid. Uh, I have already mentioned it, so delivered to Commissioner uh, Kadri Simpson, it was now a month ago, a report on how DSO could contribute to the EU recovery plan. The re report provides that the European Commission with, within clear, concrete recommendation. It is crystal clear. Grid infrastructure investments, I mean real money to improve the grid, here in your country in Ireland as well as in, in all member states have a very positive impact both on climate change mitigation and on social issues and social issues will become very important. We have proposed four topics together with a bank company to help us to challenge and deepen this proposal. The four proposals first around storage and flexibilities. We think that you should reinforce the SO rule in the development of competitive storage solution and flexibilities. Secondly, around electric mobility, to get out of the, how can I tell, uh, of, of the chicken and egg this discussion about uh, EV discussions, uh, we propose to accelerate the EV infrastructure development. The markets cannot do it alone, N not fast enough at least. Third, equipment components, service capabilities, uh, Uh, sourcing all the question of supply chain. New rules should be uh, investigated to secure the supply chain for technology, for IT especially, which are key to the network dis digitalization on one side and on the other one is the question of sovereignty of uh, our countries and globally speaking of uh, Europe. And the last topic in this proposal, uh, recovery proposal is, is around IT, data, cybersecurity. Uh, cyber security is becoming not only a threat, it, it's becoming a core business for, for, for the, the grid uh, activities. Uh, we are, DSOs are local, uh, we are a neutral company, you know, in the market you have generators, suppliers, as competition, and you have the infrastructure, the platform, yes, and the, this platform is neutral uh, and close to the cities, close to the cities and close EU should strengthen our role, we think, in, the, in this neutral data explorer uh, by protecting privacy, of course, yes, a lot of discussion in some uh, countries about uh, privacy. We have to, to uh, definitely to, to protect the privacy, uh, but for the sake of renovation of buildings in some countries, for question of energy efficiency, for question of fighting against energy poverty, 
data is key and to, we do need neutral uh, players for this. If you can move to the next slide, wonderful, thank you very much. So smart grids are uh, key tools um, uh, to drive the energy system transformation and integration. Uh, earlier this month, it has been said, the European Commission produced this, the, the energy system integration strategy. Uh, we think it improves clearly, it's very positive, the energy system transformation to decarbonize and to, to end use sectors. Um, electricity smart grids are the core of the change and as they provide the means to manage uh, energy sector coupling. Uh, the energy system integration is one, on one hand, I would say a big challenge for network management. Generation sources are now coming from, from everywhere and from different energy carriers. And, and on the other hand, a huge opportunity. Energy sector coupling provides more flexibility and increase overall energy savings. Micro, micro generation, in some countries, uh, Adi, we have Colleagues, yes, more from I would say from the northern part of part of, of, of part of Europe, uh, micro generation, heating and cooling. I mean, for residential buildings, uh, complementary with the integration of the renewables, storage uh, through low carbon hydrogen. You see the money uh, we discuss in all countries and the European level on, on hydrogen. Yes, the connection between hydrogen and storage is key and can become an important source of flexibility. In, in, the way, in that way, smart grids are essential tools to decarbonize our economy and to a wide electrification of our building, transport, transport is key, and industry. So as uh, EDSO uh, also we strongly support the revision of the 10-year regulation to reinforce smart grid projects and to ensure the inclusion of synergies between sectors, synergies between sectors. Not, notably energy and mobility. We think that verticals are not an answer as we need to have, to have an, an horizontal uh, approach. And so the last slide to, to keep uh, time for, for, for a question. Yes, this is, you see on this slide, uh, I think the, 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 the first page of our recommendation uh, uh, to, to the commission. So what's next? Time, I'm okay. Uh, what's next? In, in this context, uh, one thing uh, is, is sure uh, a number of surprises lie uh, in, in, in wait. Uh, uh, I was mentioning uh, artificial intelligence. When you look at the development of, of, uh, of, of, of this, this issue in the world, we cannot do it alone, but we have to be leaders. This means transformation about cooperation strategy with uh, companies. When you look at the question of, of 5G, I don't know what's the discussion in your country uh, about 5G. In France, there are some discussions, yes, uh, uh, with, uh, with some places where there are lots of, uh, is it dangerous or not, uh, what's about the opportunity, etc., etc. 5G, this, with this technology will, will be a, a huge game changer. The involvement of customer, we think, as ITSO, uh, as we think, as uh, would say, as manager of our companies, that definitely the power of the customer will be absolutely crucial in the coming decade. Uh, awareness and ecological issues of the customer, but of the citizen, but of, of the village or the, the cities where the citizens are living. So all these challenges are, are chances, are big opportunities. Uh, our DSO spirit is to handle this, this kind of uncertainty. Uh, yet a lot of that, so we can, we can fear it, but this is not our spirit. We say these uncertainties are opportunities and to transform it to, to create value for territories and, and consumer. In implementing the recommendation from uh, the ITSO in partnership, as I told with uh, Bain, a recovery plan, we, we want clearly to give a signal. We want to fully play our role as neutral, citizen-centric and local enablers and contribute to the, I don't know how the, the word sovereignty is, 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 is seen in, in, in Ireland, but we think that Europe have a role to play in the world. And we have to, to uh, I was speaking about supply chain or IT or cybersecurity. 
we have to develop, develop this together. I started this uh, keynote with a 3D uh, strategy. Uh, let me close it with a 4D concept. The first D, of course, is still digitalization through network management, yes. Decarbonization, second D, uh, in smoothing the digital transformation of the system. The third, of course, very important decentralization involving customer, local stakeholders, etc. And, and the fourth one for DSO, D, uh, like DSO, to connect the three pillar, previous pillars to the society. Connect all this to the society, to the countries, to the region, to the cities, to the villages. The ecosystem is a global one. Uh, from technology to social behaviors, uh, through financial or economical issues, from companies, uh, we are as, as, as an association, we are an association of companies, but we have to discuss and we do it with NGOs. They have other contribution, a complementary view, we have to discuss with states, cities and people for political and, and worldwide decisions. Our commitment as DSOs is to act, to invest and to connect, to act, to invest and to connect. So uh, to finish, uh, I would like to thank uh, again, yes, in this uh, end of July, it's impressive to organize this kind of event. So congratulations. Thanks. Uh, all these uh, all people who organize these events. Thank you very much to uh, ESB Network. It's a, a great initiative you have you have done these days. So, and um, Padiers and Fergal uh, Mara are very active in our association. Padi, thanks for for having invited me as chairman. I'm here on behalf of all of you. Yes, uh, it's for one person, but it, uh, it's it's a collective. Uh, uh, I, I would say your presence here. Uh, this webinar. Read and I'm eager to hear um, comments or maybe uh, I hope uh, uh, questions, any questions are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Christian. That's that's great. Um, and indeed, questions are streaming in. But if I if I might abuse my position just for a moment to uh, to start off things, because my experience is mainly on the other side of the of the meter, in the building side, and I'm aware of very interesting work being done within the international agent international energy agencies uh, research activities, which involves Irish participants. I'm aware of people at UCD Dublin involved in this, but it's it's focusing on and energy flexible buildings, uh, grid responsive uh, buildings. So there's an area here I think where we could talk about smart grids and smart buildings, the opportunities in the buildings also to contribute to shifting uh, peak demand, of course efficiency, reducing the demand and so on. So to, does that come within your ambit as well, Christian? Thanks for, for this uh, question, Owen. Um, I mentioned the, the way smart grids can now give a value on the flexibility on a local, on, on, on a local area. Because look, look back, uh, 20 years back, we created in Europe, which is now wonderful, the so-called wholesale market, yes? And we, we, we give value to, to energy grid blocks on, 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 uh, between countries, between, uh, including with Ireland, uh, the, so, but now the question, it's not finished with, with wholesale markets, but yes, buildings, exactly what you mentioned, the flexibility of buildings, especially uh, big buildings, yes, with a consumption, the way they, they handle this flexibility will create value. And we invest in R&D and buddy in some, we have uh, uh, win some, some uh, projects, your projects about this, how this flexibility can create value locally, but also globally on the system, because you can avoid maybe to invest in a big uh, generation uh, device. And so you see this, 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 yes, of course, yes, the building is becoming part of the energy system. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. Fascinating, thank you. I have a question in here, um, which in fact has uh, two heads to it. In fact, it's partly directed at, uh, at you, Paddy, but um, it's from uh, His Excellency, the Finnish ambassador to Ireland, uh, Raleigh Lond, actually. And um, he's asking, Christian, firstly, could you speak about how to channel more funds in the future in the European context, and then to 
Paddy Hayes, he's wondering how strongly will the development of smart grids feature in the Irish recovery plan. But Christian, for, um, uh, the opportunities to channel more funds in, in the European context? What, what with more funds? More, more, more funds to support uh, the development of uh, smart grids in, in Europe uh, uh, is the way I interpret the ambassador's question. I, I, I'm not sure that I understand the, the question with more funds. Uh, uh, more money, more more European uh, uh, funds. Yeah. So and I mean, suppose it's it's relevant to the European Green Deal. Yeah. And yes, the question is not only more uh, more money. Yes, um, uh, I, I I told it uh, further on. Uh, Seventy billion euro invested in grid is a good investment. So yes. If the question is, uh, should Europe, uh, so this is why I, we asked the question, is the question is, should Europe propose some funds to accelerate, as an example, the EV infrastructure uh, in Europe? Yes, yes, we should this with special funds. You know, the, the clean energy package said the, the, the electric vehicle system is a question of market. And the DSO cannot invest in infrastructure. They only invest if the markets give the signal. We think, and this is one of the proposals, we think that to, uh, I, I said that the question of uh, chicken and eggs, yes, and funds dedicated, maybe not in all countries, yes, it depends uh, on, the, on the automotive industry, it depends on, on, I would say, the size of the country, of the environment of the country. But to develop this infrastructure with dedicated funds, yes, we think it would be good. The second example I would give to this question is funds for, would say, renovation, yes. In some countries, the question of, of energy efficiency, in the, in, not only in, in commercial buildings, but in private buildings, is not only a question of CO2, so it's a question of electricity poverty. A lot of people can not pay their bill. And to have dedicated funds, if this is the question of our cooling, for renovation buildings, we think as it's more, we push it, yes, to be clear. Thank you. Um, Paddy, can, can you say anything about the, uh, the extent to which uh, smart grids might feature in the Irish recovery plan? Yeah, thanks, so and, and thanks, uh, Riley, for, for the question. I think um, it's important to remember at, at our um, medium and high voltage levels, our grids are already very, very smart. So the challenge for us um, over the next five years, and, and in fact beyond the next five and 10 years, as part of this price review PR5 and the subsequent PR6, the challenge for us is to make the grids uh, the, at the low voltage level at this distribution um, as smart as they need to be. And uh, that's gonna be really important uh, to enable uh, electrification of transport where, for example, Ireland's um, Climate Action Plan talks about uh, so many hundreds of thousands of uh, electric vehicles on the roads by the end of this, uh, this decade. And into that space, uh, we're gonna have to do um, a lot of investment to make sure that that low voltage distribution system, which wasn't designed for that, is capable of enabling and facilitating that. And we're, as, we're, as we're looking at this, and people will see those proposals and the regulators um, in the regulators consultation papers that came out last week, we'll see those proposals. There are, there are material amounts of, of money in that. But what's really important for us as we look at this is that we'll try first of all to use the capacity that's already in the network. And then we'll try and use smart methods by which we can um, maybe, uh, maybe share or maybe phase shift the, uh, the demand. Um, or maybe we can link into storage that people have in their in their own, own homes or in, in other areas, and only then will we be making um, and that will avoid us sometimes having to make really significant um, uh, nuts and bolts investment in the, in the network, which of course will be required in some areas to reinforce it. So we've got a uh, we've got a strategy for this. Uh, we're going to work through it uh, very carefully, um, and it's all there for consultation at the moment with uh, with the CRU. Thanks very much, Paddy. Thank you. There's a question uh, from uh, uh, the ESB, in fact, from Dalgan O'Donnell, who uh, asks, um, will the smart grid result in higher electricity prices? 
and what will the smart grid do for ordinary residential electricity customers, uh, Christian? Um, yeah. are we going to, uh, is it going to cause price to go up? Yes, the, the question of price. Um, if you look at uh, before the crisis in France, I don't know if in, in, in your country this has been on, on, on the newspaper, but uh, there, there was a, a decision to increase a little bit the price of, of, uh, of fuel. Uh, just it was yes uh, more than a year ago and developed very very suddenly and sometimes by a very brutal way the so-called gilet jaune we said in France yes the yellow jacket because the question of price this is why I said smart grid is not only a question of technology it's a question of, 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 of social issues and aspects and the price is key this is why we, we, we think as an in when I said we, we, we can be and we should be uh, smart grid leaders, not alone as CSOs, but with the European industry, is also to, to, to maintain the price so low as it possible. Yes, we cannot invest in grid, invest in grid and, and, and increase the price. We have to, to connect all the values. I was speaking about uh, uh, connecting uh, heating, uh, gas, uh, all the, the question of sector uh, coupling, is really to avoid to, to, to have all the investment in addition and, and have uh, higher prices. People will not accept to pay more and more. The question of price is not only a question of greed, yes, uh, because uh, in all countries you have the generation, you have costs, you have the greed cost, and you have a lot, not know in Ireland, but a lot of countries, a lot of taxes, local taxes or national taxes, but we have to maintain an acceptable price for the end users. This is key. And this is, we are totally, uh, Paddy, I can tell this on, 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 sorry, on behalf of yourself, we are totally aware of this. When we invest in innovation, we have in mind the costs in the future. Thank you. Um, the question, um, and it's actually another question uh, from another area of the ESP. Uh, Clive Bowers is energy policy manager, uh, but it's, it's related to some extent. Will the move to smart appliance rollout be driven by the market or will a central mandate uh, through technology standards be required to, to drive out the smart appliances? Yeah, this, when you, maybe you can uh, give in addition uh, uh, what you're doing on smart meter, for example. We developed in, in a lot of countries, uh, currently very actively in France, as we have a, one standard of smart meters, it's called Linky in France, whatever the name is. We have a, it's a, it's a, a standard for all over the countries, more or less the same standard than it is in, uh, in Spain or in Italy or in, in, in Portugal. Uh, it's important to have come back on the question of, of, of sovereignty to have standards and uh, to develop it by acceptable prices yes uh, the question of, of standard is important it's the case for smart meters so uh, when we look the, the i would say the the, the the return of investment of smart meters is positive is positive uh, but it's the same the, the question of standard for access to data, I was speaking about data and, and the enormous value uh, of the data and uh, for, for the end users and, and, and local areas and uh, cities. To have one standard, we, we proposed to the Commission, it was now three years ago maybe, we have developed through a demonstrator in several countries, uh, I would say some kind of green button, yes, to accept, to, 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 to allow the customer to access to the same standard all over Europe to, to the DSO data. This is key because if, if uh, in, in some countries it's difficult, yes, my, uh, you mentioned that I had the pleasure to, to be manager in Germany. In Germany you have a lot of DSOs, they, they try to now to work together to develop common standard because if each company in, in Germany or in Austria or my other friends and colleagues develop their own smart meters, for sure, the cost will be higher. And the question of maintaining and being uh, on, on the head, on, 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 on the lead of, of, of uh, technology, you cannot do it alone, yes? When you look what happened in the world about 
artificial intelligence. I don't want to, to assess talk too much this topic, but it's quite impressive. So we have to handle it together. Paddy, I don't know if you want to add something about standard art. Or... Well, I, I, maybe just to take a little, um, slightly different uh, dimension of the question, Christian, I really love the question because what it does is it pulls us back to uh, the customer. So you mentioned the customer a number of times there. This sort of question uh, and the uh, smart revolution around distribution systems, it brings the customer uh, front and center into the distribution um, environment. And it, it's not just a revolution about technology. Um, it's actually, it's a cultural a revolution because what uh, smart devices are going to allow and what smart metering is going to allow is the customer to interact with their own electricity and their energy uh, system and play a, a, a critical part in uh, decarbonizing society and i think a large uh, a, a large number of people in ireland will um will use that as an opportunity to uh, not just at a, an individual level but also potentially at a community level take an opportunity to play their part in uh, decarbonization through clean electricity. And smart devices, uh, like the ones that uh, Clive, uh, Clive has mentioned there, interacting with our smart systems are going to allow for that to happen. And this is gonna be quite a challenge, not just a technical challenge, Christian, I think, for distribution system operators. There is a, a cultural um, challenge as well to, um, to uh, open up the distribution systems and to embrace the, the other challenge that's going to come in a different direction from, from the changing needs of the customers as they start to get involved in their own, uh, in their own energy. Thank you, Paddy. Thank you. I, I have a question, Christian, from uh, one of our ministries, um, Joseph Cummins at the Department of Business, Enterprise and Innovation, uh, makes the point that uh, in Ireland here, we have very significant targets indeed for increased electrification. Uh, most particularly in, in transport and in domestic heating. But we're also of, uh, seeing uh, a strong increase in demand from data centers. And his question is, um, is high demand growth a constraint or uh, is it complementary to increasing integration of renewables on the grid? Yes, it's, um, it's an important question because uh, not only the case in, in, in Ireland, I think that the question of transport and, and, and uh, domestic uh, end user electricity is, uh, is key for, for CO2. It depends how you produce. This is why the, the, the link to, from renewables is, is, uh, is absolutely crucial. But in the same time, it's right. If we want, uh, I was speaking about sovereignty, about data and IT and cyber security. This means data center more data center in, in, in Europe? Uh, and it's a very good question. This means increasing uh, electricity, yes, because data center, when you look what, what you need, in, what happened in India or in, in, in China uh, around data center, they use a lot of electricity, but they are also, exactly, uh, you mentioned it, uh, Owen, when you were speaking about the buildings in the system, data center can also be, I would say, a, a huge, um, um, way to, to, to value the flexibility, yes, um, because data center, the, the, the use of data center, if you connect it with what's around this data center, you, create, you can create systems. So it's a challenge, this increase of the data center, but it's not an option. We, need, we do need this data center, and so we have to connect all the environments to the, to the, to the system, yes. But electrification, really, uh, just, uh, sorry, but electrification uh, and, and CO2 is deeply linked, yes. When you look for decades, there is sure. no, no option about it. Sure. Um, a question which is perhaps of particular um, significance for ourselves on, on this island, but um, from the ESB's Managing Director for Northern Ireland, uh, Paul Stapleton, he asks, what impact do you think that Brexit will have on the vision of achieving an integrated smart grid across Europe? And will um, uh, EDSO, uh, will EDSO continue to work with uh, Britain to achieve this um, European smart grid? A difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for this question. <laughs> 
we we um, we we think yes. The, if if the answer should be very short, it's yes. We think that, uh, for example, the question of of, of data integrate uh, smart grids. It's not only it's 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 less and less a question of of copper and and uh, I mentioned it copper or or or, convert or uh, power uh, transformer etc. So to have an integration uh, of smart grids means standards of IoTs, means standard of, of uh, I would say, data, uh, the, the, the data environment, means standards uh, about communication, I was speaking by 5G uh, example. And this is for us, we've seen it, the northern part of Ireland, uh, Paddy uh, and Paul, we, we, we try to get it. We are very happy, very happy as an association, I said with <laughs> very continuously, that, that ESB is so active in our association. And Paddy is also uh, handling the cooperation between us and the TSOs. It's another as very important aspect, the, the cooperation between the transmission operator and the distribution operator. And ESB, through your geographical uh, environments, can help the association to maintain this link uh, with, uh, with, I would say, with this nice part of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, a, a question from um, um, a, a member of the Institute, Mr. Yong Sheng Wang. He asks, uh, some customers will pay attention to where their electricity supply comes from. Uh, will smart grids allow the consumer to locate and identify the source of their electricity so that the customer can select a greener source of electricity. So, will smart grid tell you what flavor of electron you're getting? The answer is clearly yes. I don't know, Paddy, may you can precise in your country what you are doing. In France, it has been mentioned that in my company, I'm also in charge of the concessions because we are organized around concessions. The local authorities, in fact, are the owner of the grid in France. Uh, it's, uh, so we, are, we have a concession system. And uh, to, they, they want to know now where the electricity is coming from. And we can do this through the data because all customers are connected to the DSOs. Yeah? Whoever the supplier is, and there is large and active competition in France, we have now six as uh, yes, nearly 70 suppliers, but in front on, on local, including on open data, the, the guarantee of origin, I would say, from electricity. And this is one of the service that, as a neutral enabler, we as DSO, we develop. It's not yet, at least in France, uh, but maybe you can precise, uh, Paddy, but by, in France, it's not yet totally industrialized, but yes, we can do this, and we will do this. Thank you. Do, do you want to add anything, Paddy, or is that okay? Um, you're... Yeah, so, um, well, just, just maybe to add to that, I think um, in, our, in Ireland, we look at that as um, more of the sources the, the, the aggregated source of supply, but what is really, what I think is really nice about smart meters in the future, and I suspect uh, is that at any given time of the day, um, it's, it's gonna be possible for customers to understand about the carbon intensity of the general electricity that's being generated in the system. So I was saying at the start, I think over the last six months, I again saw some numbers from IWEA there that are SEAI numbers, um, Ireland's, um, uh, electricity generated from from wind uh, is up around 38 or 39 percent for the first six months of the year and it was over 40 percent for the first five months of the year and i think it will we'll get to a stage with smart meters and with the sort of um smart services that i think supply companies are likely to um bring forward that uh, any customer is going to be able to understand the carbon intensity of the electricity that that they're consuming at that given point in time. And that'll allow people to make choices, choices about um, deferring electricity usage to times when the carbon intensity is lower and so on. Or equally, if they've got uh, some flexibility around storage or around charging electric vehicle, they'll be able to play tunes on that 
overall playing their part in min minimizing the carbon intensity of, of society. And I think that's a really, really nice and important feature of, of smart grids. Thanks, Fali. Um, Christian, um, uh, and a colleague in the, uh, in the Institute, uh, Sophie Andrews McCarroll, uh, um, mentions uh, or, or raises a question about a topic that you did make reference to. Um, you talked about the resilience to cybersecurity threats. And uh, uh, even here in, in Ireland, we've seen some instances of cyber attacks on the, on the Irish grid. How prevalent is this challenge across Europe? And has it been more difficult during the uh, COVID-19 emergency uh, where attention has been focused elsewhere, please? Thanks. Um, I come on cybersecurity just to add, um, we are very spontaneous as to the previous question, just to yeah. add the importance of the, the self-consumption uh, and, and the, the communities. If communities developing all over Europe, uh, they want to have green electricity, they share the electricity between them, around them, not as an island in a system, but they share this, to come on cyber. Yes, the topic is, was key uh, during, we cannot be more precise uh, on, on this, yes, but there were, yes, there, there were several um, risks uh, identified during this crisis in some of our members. Um, the, I would say the attacks are more and more strong and very precise. Uh, so we pay, yes, we pay more and more attention. This is, this is the, the fourth topic we made uh, to, the, to the Commission uh, on this question of cyber. And we have these days, the discussion we have our board in next board uh, as it's so in October, it's one of the discussion, what's about the future of EDSO for smart grids in this question of cyber? Should we invest? It's one of the questions. There's no answer yet. It's not yes, it's not no. But there is a question on the table. Should we invest together as companies? We are neutral, yes. We are not competitors, yes. ESB is not competitor of any of this in France. Should we invest together to protect the system? The TSOs, the, the transmission system operators, sorry, have done it. We are doing, we are, they are on the way to do this. This is one of the questions we have to handle in the future. I, I, I said that a lot of uh, questions um, in, in, in front of us and for the coming, uh, and for sure cyber is, is, is not, in addition, we have to handle cyber. Cyber security is, is a herd of, of uh, DSOs, so important as copper is. Okay. Um. A question uh, from Mike Kelleher of InnoWatts. It's, a, it's a, an AI data analytics company. And he asks, how important will time of use tariffs, uh, which obviously incentivize customers to use more energy at off-peak times, how important will they be in facilitating uh, ever-increasing uh, renewables uh, penetration in, in the smart grid? So it's uh, time of use tariffs. Yeah, how important, very important. This is exactly the question of, uh, of uh, I would say, the, the, the value created by, uh, by the smart meters, yes, because uh, you, you, can, uh, you can, the supplier can propose to, it, uh, to, to, to his uh, customer uh, uh, an adapted uh, time uh, or offer to, to have, uh, I would say, a tailor-made uh, proposal uh, to the customer, it's not the same for people who are living at home uh, all the day. Uh, we have seen during crisis that on residential side there were no decreases. It was another poor in the day, during day, but there was no global decrease on residential side. Yes, during the COVID crisis, it's not the same, of course, in the industry. And so the smart meters, one of of of, of the. the, the Enormous power of the smart meters is to allow to the to the suppliers, and not only the I would say the historical suppliers. Maybe the question is coming more from a, a startup or I don't know or the, the size of a, the company. The, the, the colleague asked the question, but we we 
I, I think as a neighbor, we, we can promote and make possible more and more time to, uh, of use uh, tariffs. We, have, we will launch in, in, in September uh, together with the government, uh, sponsored by the government in, 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 in Paris, uh, some kind of, uh, of uh, free days. We, we bring anonymous data, bring it to startups, to companies, and they will, I would say, uh, transform it. In how can they build offers and tariffs which are exactly adapted to what the customer need. And this is a great, uh, yes, a great transformation, which will be not in 10 years, I'm sure that will go very fast, yes. Once the smart meters is available, it goes very fast because you have data, you have data. Yeah, um, it's a, a partly a, a, a related question and we're coming near the end of our, our question periods. Um, um, there are a couple of questions I haven't been able to get to yet, but there's one which I think is related, and that is um, from Dara Moriarty in the Institute. Uh, what are the essential tools for creating local energy communities for a, a, a newly decentralized electricity grid? Um, the essential tools for, so how do we go about creating uh, local energy uh, communities using the, the smart grid uh, principles? I would say, <laughs> very spontaneously, I would say the most important is trust. Because if you create a community, you need trust between all the members of this community. More concretely, trust means for we're developing in a lot of countries, yes, our members are developing and we share our experiences, as I said, to accelerate. Um, they accept to share their own data with the member of these communities, yes? Because if you want to optimize these local communities, you have to, to, to yes, to, to, to use the flexibility when your neighbor is not at home and you are at home, you, you use the electricity from the roof of, of, of his house. And this means trust. We as DSO, we organize this scene from a technology side, yes? We, we, we offer them to sign uh, some kind of contract so they share their data. But the question is trust. The question is, is, is less technology than trust? So my opinion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. No, I think, I think we might uh, have to treat that as our final question. I'm keeping an eye on the time here uh, uh, as well. Um, so I, I think really at this stage, it, it falls to me to thank you most sincerely, uh, Christian Bouchel, for your um, um, revelation of, of some of the things which are going on in this really important area central to our energy uh, transition. Um, uh, it, it was, it's been very good of you to, from the eastern part of France, to join with us in, in discussing these issues and exchanging ideas and uh, experience. So we're very grateful indeed. Um, for our part in the IIEA, I also want to thank the ESB it's been great to have uh, Paddy Hayes as Managing Director of ESB Networks on board, and we're very grateful to the ESB for their support in enabling uh, this, this series on, on the, um, uh, the, the uh, rethinking, Rethink Energy, the ESB IIEA uh, series. Thank you all very much, and I wish you a good day and good weekend. Thank you. Thank you.